It's the most wonderful time of the year. The bones are supporting and blood cells are forming in the bone marrow. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <sighs> it's the holiday season. And while you're baking your gingerbread cookies and sipping on your hot chocolate, this is the perfect time to learn about the skeletal system. Your skeletal system is the foundation for your body and it does some pretty important things. First, it provides support. So it's the framework for your body. Two, it provides protection. For example, your skull protects your brain and your ribs protect your heart and lungs. Three, movement. Your muscles connect to your bones to allow movement. Number four, mineral storage. Your bones store minerals like calcium and phosphorus. And number five, hematopoiesis. <laughs> Hemato what? Hematopoiesis. That means blood cell formation. Hemato means blood and poiesis means formation. Blood cells are actually formed in the bone marrow. You have 206 bones, but when you were born, you had nearly 300 bones. What happened? Well, babies have more flexible cartilage, and as they grow, some of the cartilage hardens and becomes bone, and some of those bones fuse together. Your bones are grouped into two divisions, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton, which consists of the bones of the head, vertebral column, and rib cage, has 80 bones. And the appendicular skeleton, which has 126 bones, is composed of the bones of the upper limbs and the lower limbs, also known as your appendages. We can't learn all 206 bones today, but I'm going to help you learn 30 bones. Let's get this skeletal holiday party started. Bones can be classified according to their shape. Long, short, flat, and irregular. Take a look at these four bones. Can you determine what type it is? The first bone is the humerus of your upper arm. Notice that the humerus is a long bone because it is longer than it is wide. And hitting this bone is not humerus at all. The second bone is found in the carpals of the wrists, and it's a short bone. Short bones are cube-like in shape and are pretty equal in length, width, and thickness, just like the ice cubes that will go in my eggnog. <sighs> the third bone is the scapula, otherwise known as your shoulder blade, and this is a flat bone. Notice that flat bones aren't 100% flat. They are a bit curved. Flat bones remind me of the spatula I will use to pick up my Christmas cookies. Yummy! The last bone is an irregular bone, and this particular bone is the vertebrae. Irregular bones don't fit any of the other classifications, and their shapes are a bit more complex. Learning the location of bones is difficult, but don't worry, the science G is here. Let's start with some of the long bones in your body. The femur is the longest and strongest bone in the body, and it's found in your thigh. How do I remember that it's the strongest? FE on the periodic table stands for iron, and bodybuilders pump iron in the gym. Next up is the tibia and fibula, found in the lower leg. How do I remember that the fibula is smaller? If someone tells a fib, that's a small lie. So the fibula is smaller in size than the tibia. How about metatarsals and metacarpals? The root word meta means between or middle. And if you look at the location of the metatarsals in the foot and the metacarpals in the hand, you will notice that they are between the phalanges and tarsals and the phalanges and carpals. So how do I remember that the metacarpals are in the wrist and not in the foot? Well, have you ever heard of carpal tunnel syndrome? It's a condition that occurs when the median nerve, which is one of the major nerves to the hand, is squeezed or compressed as it travels through the wrist. 
or kind of like when Santa is squeezing through the chimney. The radius and ulna are also long bones that connect between the elbow joint and the wrist. The radius connects to the thumb side of the wrist and I use my thumb to make thumbprint cookies during the holiday season. Man, I'm hungry. The last long bone that we will talk about are the phalanges. Phalanges are the bones that make up the fingers of the hands and the toes of the feet. Each finger and toe has three phalanges, but your thumb and large toe have two. A phalanx in ancient Greece was a military formation where soldiers stood shoulder to shoulder in ranks. Aristotle, a Greek philosopher, called the bones in the fingers and toes phalanges because they are arranged in ranks, proximal, middle, and distal. This is similar to a military formation or like the formation of toy soldiers in the Nutcracker. Moving on to short bones. The two main examples of short bones are the carpals in the wrist and tarsals of the ankle. These bones remind me of two rivals, one from the North Pole and one from the South Pole. Carpals are on the building representing the North Pole. Reside! You guys have nothing on the tarsals in our sea walk. Calcaneus walk. Next up are flat bones. Flat bones usually serve as points of attachment or protection for internal organs. For example, the sternum. The sternum serves as a point of attachment for the ribs. And it kind of looks like a necktie, which is pretty cool because an ugly Christmas tie can hang over this area. The sternum is made up of three parts, the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process, MBX. Motorcycle enthusiasts should like that. Like I said before, the sternum serves as a point of attachment for the ribs and your ribs are also flat bones. They provide protection for the heart and lungs, and you have 12 pairs. Like the 12 days of Christmas. The first seven rib pairs connect directly to the sternum, so they are called true ribs. The next five pairs are called false ribs. The eighth to 10th pair connect to the costal cartilages of the ribs just above them. But the 11th and 12th rib pairs attach only to the vertebrae and not to the sternum or cartilage of the sternum. So they are called floating ribs. See if you can answer this question. Which of the statements below is true? A, all floating ribs are false ribs, but not all false ribs are floating ribs. B, all false ribs are floating ribs, but not all floating ribs are false ribs. If you said A, you are correct. Another example of flat bones are the cranial bones of the skull. Occipital, parietal, frontal, nasal, lacrimal, and vomer and the bones of the pelvis. Ilium, ischium, and pubis. Those names sound like the cast of a really bad Christmas movie. But speaking of the pelvis, did you know that the female pelvis is wider than the male pelvis? Why is that so? If you guessed that the female pelvis is wider to accommodate childbirth, you are correct. Let's move on to irregular bones. The vertebrae of the spine are considered irregular bones because they tend to have a more complex shape. You have seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, and five lumbar vertebrae. 7 a.m., candy canes for breakfast, C for candy and C for cervical. 12 p.m., turkey for lunch. T for turkey and T for thoracic. And at 5 p.m., you get leftovers for dinner. L for leftovers and L for lumbar. Facial bones like the zygomatic, mandible, and hyoid bone are also irregular bones. Here's a fun fact. 
Your hyoid bone is considered to be a floating bone because it's the only bone that doesn't articulate with another bone. The hyoid bone sits high above the larynx, kind of like mistletoe. Wow, we learned a lot. We learned the five functions of the skeletal system, the difference between the axial and appendicular skeleton, and the various types of long, short, flat, and irregular bones. I hope that helped, and I'll see you in the next one. Science G, signing out.